moving on with the next projects. Um, I'd never taken the spare tire off, so we did that. It goes up and down. I topped it off, inspected it. It does need to be replaced, but it's a spare. <laughs> Doesn't leak. The cylinder so far hasn't seized up. That's good. Figured since I had it off, the first major thing I'm going to do is the air over hydraulic operation that needs to be rebuilt. I'm going to do that. Here's the tools that I used to do the rebuild project. Got like a soft blow mallet. I used some curved small needle nose. Um, snap ring pliers, the one for an internal type. Small flathead screwdriver, picks, you might need a couple different ones. 3 16 Allen wrench, 5 32 Allen wrench, 3 32 Allen wrench. On uh, these smaller ones, I use both the standard type and a T-handle type. Uh, you can get away with just using this type. Half inch wrench, 9 16 wrench, quarter inch drive, 3 8 drive, ratchets. I used 5 16 on the quarter inch, half inch socket, and 11 16 I used a sucker to take all the old hydraulic fluid out, some O ring silico silicone grease, and a brake clean. You're probably going to need more than one thing of brake clean. Another thing you don't need, but I have this little parts washer. That was helpful. This is the rebuild kit, SPX, power team, repair kit, revision 14, part numbers 300140. There's more stuff in here that I'll probably use. It comes with the parts breakdown and stuff. Kinda sucks, but I should be able to figure it out. None of these are labeled, and I have no idea what this little glue would be used for. I was looking at this foam wondering what it is. That would be where the vent goes, but there's like a ceramic vent on this one, so this is not applicable. But it's got the spring, the big case, one and everything, and a material safety data sheet, which is actually out of spec, should be a safety data sheet. But anyway, uh, this drawing will probably come and help trying to figure out what goes where. All right, you gotta start by taking this cover off. Half inch, there's nuts at the bottom on this side. Looks like one of mine's missing. And there's some half inch bolts under this. Nine sixteenths for the airline, both the hydraulic hoses. I'm gonna tape these and label them. Up here it's return and pressure. Okay, I got everything out. So I just gotta start cleaning up everything. It's real nasty from all the leaking and stuff it did. All right, I got it all apart and laid out how so I can kind of remember it and you can look in here. All of that is blown apart gasket or whatever you want to call it. There's some of this one left on there that goes in between the spring and all that. Everything else seems to be in pretty decent shape. You know, some of these O-rings and stuff are squished. So, and I'm not going to go as far as taking this piece apart. They call it the air controller or something like that or in here but what o-rings and stuff that you see I probably will replace um, I believe looking at it that these are the two that were blown out um, the other thing I was confused about was what this was I was thinking that maybe it was a glue of some sort but it's a lube and it's supposed to be applied they call it a poppet right here and you can actually see some of that old lubrication built up on there, but I'm gonna clean, I'm gonna clean all this very good. Uh, it was on the back of the material safety data sheet. It says apply the grease to the poppet. As I'm putting it together, if there's any important notes or anything, I'll follow up with it at the end. The way that goes is this bigger one. It goes where what's left of this with the spring hitting it, and then 
in there you could see I haven't cleaned it off yet there's a internal snap ring take that snap ring out you put it in with the flared side going in there and you put the snap ring around it and that holds this in place so when you take that snap ring out this comes out Let's see and then this one you can see is all jacked up that's where this one goes like that I gotta clean it out better but that's the way it goes all right so I wanted to be clear I showed it before but when you're putting this piece together see how this part has a little flare that goes inward and it's going to be tricky to get it in there because you got to get it past where there's like a little lip so I'm going to use like a small flathead screwdriver and work its way around to get it in there and I've also lubed it pretty good I'm going to do it again All right, this is all reassembled. Not super hard to do. Uh, one thing that I was disappointed with in the uh, rebuild kit, the O-rings with the little slot in them for each side of this cylinder, it only comes with one inside the rebuild kit. And I thought maybe it was missing and I looked in the instructions and it said only one comes in the kit. I don't know why when there's two, then this paper gasket was in there that seems to fit around this, but that ain't gonna do crap for this. So it could be for like a variation of this, because you know, this could be used on anything. Uh, the other thing only had one of was this gasket that goes around the, the two spots up here. There was only one of these. Granted, these can be reused. There's not really anything wrong with them. Uh, that's what I did, I reused one of them. Uh, by the way, this is that gasket I was talking about that goes around here. Uh, one little note for helping. This is the worn out one that I talked about that goes into where the snap ring is. When you're pushing it in, what I noticed helps is you can't see it in this one, but this flange down going in like it's supposed to. I was holding pressure with my finger and then using a small flat head to sort of work the edge around to get it to pop into place. Uh, and some of the O-ring grease helped uh there's no real better way to explain it just when you're doing it have some common sense and don't destroy this putting it in because more than likely this is what's wrong or the other big one around the spring is what's wrong with yours now i just gotta put it back in the truck and hook it up man i'm glad i didn't rush up there and put it together because i just realized i forgot to put this long gasket in that goes goes between here so i'm gonna have to take that back apart and put that in i'm not gonna do that on camera Please don't forget to do that, and if you do, realize it before you go to put it back into the truck. Okay, got it all hooked back up the way it's supposed to be. Uh, the gasket in the rebuild kit, instead of cork, like was on here, was rubber. And it moved around a little bit, but you just kind of used the, the bolts going in to fish it around. Uh, sucked out all the old stuff cleaned it a little bit. It really wasn't that dirty and I added the stuff from my last video topped it off But I also put some of this uh, Lucas that I had it's like a stop leak and booster um, Don't know if it was needed, but maybe in some of the cylinders and stuff It'll help lubricate it as it goes through <laughs> I'm not putting the cover back on because I want to see what it does when I test it but uh Yeah, check it out all right, I'm out here the next day. I uh, had a few problems after putting it together. Uh, first that thing that happened was the phone died. Couldn't keep recording. Second off, I hooked it up. Uh, truck air tanks were all the way full and I pumped the thing until the tanks were empty and got no movement, pulling the cab down. I filled it up again, same thing. So I took it back apart and did a bunch of reading online and stuff like that and was seeing if I messed something up. 
uh, double check that everything was good, put it back together. And then the most common problem I saw happen was the hydraulic lines were reversed up there. I swapped them around just to see if it would make a difference. It didn't. I changed them back and then pumped this like one time. Then tried it back to the way I had originally had it and it started to work. So I, I don't know if by chance I just purged all the air out if I needed to do this first, or if by pumping it the wrong way, it just purged some air out with the lines reversed, but regardless, it's working now. And then a little bit after the pressure, it pulls that pin in, which is what it's supposed to do. Very happy. The only thing I didn't do is go put cover back over that because there's hydraulic fluid everywhere and I wanna make sure it's not gonna leak. And also I may take some degreaser and just splash it all over that because it also, everything below it from the leaks it had is all nasty and try to clean it off. So one reason why I think these tend to fail quite a bit is the fact that they dry out the seals inside. This is what came inside the repair kit, and I noticed this part number 11, and I suspected this before I even opened this up. Part number 11 is an air lubricator. So, I managed to find this one, even though it's a little big, for like 15 bucks, it's brand new, old stock, and it has a nice heavy duty metal bowl. And then I'll need some adapters because it's quarter inch piping. This is actually the fitting off the truck. This is where the air connects. This is what was going into the hydraulic pump. So that's quarter inch. So I got two bushings and then a couple different length nipples. And I'm gonna try to put this in line and I'm gonna fill this with the hydraulic fluid. So it's lubricating that side of it. And for slightly more effort, I should probably never need to rebuild it again. So here's what I came up with with it installed. Uh, seems like it's gonna work though one issue I didn't think of is this little adjustable knob for how much oil goes in when the air travels through it is higher than where the cover goes so you can go either way what I'm thinking about doing is just getting something to raise the cover up because it doesn't matter I could just use a bunch of washers or I could have used say like a nipple a 90 another nipple a 90 and just had it so it was lower which may be the more appropriate thing to do, but it's gonna work like this, so uh, we already started testing it out. Go ahead and raise. Everything's doing what it's supposed to, and you can see a little bit of the oil getting pulled up and fed. The only thing I'm unsure of with this is how exactly you're supposed to adjust it but I'll look it up on the manufacturer. I think there's a little bubble on that side and I have it set to one, which I guess is the lowest. So I went and dug in the parts bin and uh, found a couple 90s and a coupler. Should be able to put the shield on now. All right, fits good. And it's probably worse on the camera, but you can easily look at it and see if oil's in it and you can reach under here and grab that to refill it without needing to remove this. Uh, one thing I noticed I needed to do on mine, I was wondering if it should have been like this, is I added washers in between the plate and the armor. Uh, there was like a mark on the inside I noticed when I took it apart and what it was is there's a little fitting that it was sitting pretty tight against. But cool, all done.